The Auburn Tigers finally took to the practice field. They gave us plenty of time to check out what the team had to offer on day one. Let's get into it. All of my observations and more. Well, Zach, I, I actually just finished crushing some chicken farm. I am I am freaking ready to rock and roll. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Auburn's fall camp is up and going. Very, very exciting things. And look, I think in general, they looked really good. Um, a lot of guys looked bigger. A lot of guys look like they've gained weight. A lot of guys look more athletic. Grant, they're just wearing helmets, no pads or anything like that. And it's just so early, but still um, good morale, uh, I think, around the program for sure. So before we jump into these observations from practice, I think a few things are worth noting here. The first is we got to see approximately 26 minutes of the first practice of fall camp. What I'm about to say is what I observed. I don't think you should read into any of it, but it is what it is. I'm going to tell you about my experience and you can take away whatever you want from any of these things. All right. So we walk out there and we were limited to where we could stand at the beginning before they let us go all the way down the sidelines. And we watched TJ Finley with the ones was the first thing that we've seen. They've been practicing for several minutes before we got out there, but we saw TJ Finley with the ones he had tank next to him, John Samuel Shanker. And his first pass that we saw was a great clean pass, short pass to, to John Samuel Shanker. And then he threw it to Malcolm Johnson Jr., who is with the ones. We keep hearing good things about Malcolm Johnson Jr., certainly a name to watch. We've talked about him a ton on this show. And then eventually threw a touchdown to Shedrick Jackson on an outbreaking route. It wasn't quite a post because it was, I guess it, I guess you could say it was a post, but it was in the, the front of the end zone. It wasn't towards the back, but still worth noting. And I've talked about this before. I wanted to see more outbreaking routes, success with outbreaking routes in the offense this year. So that was nice. I think that was worth pointing out um, the type of route that, that was. The starting offensive line with this unit was Austin Troxel at right tackle, Keandre Jones at right guard, Nick Brahms at center, Cam Stutz. We talked about Cam Stutz on this morning show, the Friday show with Justin Ferguson. We talked about Cam Stutz a lot. And then Killian Zaire at left tackle. The biggest takeaway for that is Brandon Council was not there. Brandon Council was with the second group. The twos then came in. Zach Calzada led that group. And that offensive line was similar, the same tackles. So Troxel at right tackle, Alec Jackson at guard, Tate Johnson at center. Then Brandon Council was there, and then Killian Zaire at that left tackle spot. So there's that. And then he threw it to, uh, to Zevion Capers for a touchdown, which he looked fantastic. I mean, he is just huge. He is absolutely huge. I tweeted out a video of the wide receivers going through some work and he's like a full head taller than everybody. So there's that. So after that, then Calzada went in with the ones. It was the same group. They just switched quarterbacks and Calzada ran it down the field there. Then Harson walked up and made a hat joke a year ago. Today was hat gate where he gave a lot of members of the media that were there a hat and a few media outlets kind of scolded him for that. It became this big thing, borderline national story. And so he was walking up to the media and he's like, look, no hats, no hats. I don't have any hats, but I do have something behind you guys for you. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you get everything you guys need. Thanks for covering the team type thing. And they gave us these shirts. And for those, <laughs> for those who uh, I'll stand up so you can see it on YouTube. Uh, and for those on audio, the shirts say, I went to Auburn football practice. And all I got was this war damn t-shirt. So awesome, uh, awesome job <laughs> clapping back, Coach Harson. Um, and thank you for the shirts. I think that was pretty cool. I think that was pretty cool. Um, big picture takeaways from the, those opening drills that we saw. 
Calzada looked good. Finley looked smoother in his mechanics than he had previously. So take that for what it's worth. I wrote down Capers is huge. I mentioned that a second ago. Shedrick Jackson to me. Shedrick Jackson to me looks, um, I don't know. He looks like an NFL receiver, like physically. Like his legs are bigger. His body is bigger. He just looks quicker as well. So the combination of Shedrick Jackson looking more athletic and playing more athletic and just general size going up, that was a huge takeaway. That was a huge takeaway for me. So um, props to Shedrick Jackson. You can tell that he's been putting in the work this summer. Man, it's paid off physically. He just looks awesome. He looks awesome. Okay. Um, Cam Riley does not look like a human being. He looks like a mega giant cyborg robot. He is huge. He's bigger than everybody else on the team. So that's exciting. That's expected. And then the order of tight ends. I, I spent a lot of time watching the tight ends and the linebackers go one-on-one -on -one in some drills. And so their order that the tight ends went, once again, this may not matter, but it was John Samuel Shanker and then Luke Deal and then Tyler Fromm and then Brandon Frazier. So that was the order of the tight ends. And then, but just for perspective here, the linebacker that went first in this drill was Eugene Asante. So take that for what it's worth. I'm definitely bringing up the Asante thing because it pushes my agenda that I love him. And I think he's going to be really good for us. So I thought that was worth mentioning. Um, Zion Puckett, the defensive back, he looked really smooth, moved really, really well, seems to cover ground a little bit quicker than everybody else did around him and also looks bigger. And he was a guy that Brian Harson mentioned by name when he spoke to the media yesterday. So props to uh, Zion Puckett for that. And so that was kind of the gist of all of that. And then just looking at the defensive backs, Jalen Simpson seemed to take on a more vocal role with the defensive backs group. And we talked about, you know, who's going to kind of emerge as the leader there. And not that... You know, not that Roger McCreary last year was this big vocal leader because that just wasn't his style. He's a pretty quiet dude. He, um, it, there's still a lot of question marks about the defensive back room and who's going to step up there. Jalen Simpson seems to be the vocal leader of the group based on this 26 minutes of the first practice of fall camp. Once again, perspective is needed here. Um, JD Rim among the defensive backs, he doesn't look like a freshman, which is exciting. We talked about that with Jay Ferg on this morning's show. Uh, on Locked on Auburn, and he, yeah, he he just, he doesn't look like a freshman. He, he was standing next to uh, Nehemiah Pritchett, and I was kind of standing behind them watching the drill, and he looked, they all looked the exact same size, so that was encouraging. That was encouraging for J.D. Rim, for sure. All right, one-on-one -on -one battles with quarterbacks throwing two wide receivers and defensive backs covering them. Very exciting stuff. Um, and probably the best versions, uh, the best takeaways of the um, of the afternoon. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Today's show is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your sports action. Look, you can get the Tigers for a really good deal when you look at the futures. They've got futures for every Power Five conference and some of the Group of Five conferences as well. If you think Auburn can outperform or really any team in the SEC that's not Alabama or Georgia, you can get them at a really good price. Right now, so head over to Bet Online. Just search Bet Online. It'll pop up on your phone. Their mobile device may be even easier to use than their their website on your computer. So check it all out. Bet Online. It's where the game starts. All right, one on ones. So I believe Zach Calzada went first in this drill. His first attempt, he, Zach would throw three. TJ would throw three. Zach would throw three. TJ would throw three. And his first attempt was to Shedrick Jackson and Jalen Simpson forced an incompletion there. That pass was on the sideline, if I recall correctly. His second pass was to Malcolm Johnson Jr. Had a really good route, a contested catch to Nehemiah Pritchett. There was actually probably more contact on that rep than anything else I saw throughout the entire day. So Pritchett um, forcing contact. Malcolm Johnson Jr. focusing on catching the football through contact. There was a lot to like about it. An incredible ball placement by Zach Calzada. So you got to love that. And then his third pass, Calzada's third pass, was a completion to uh, Javarius Johnson. And that was against, who was that against? That was against uh, Marquez Gilbert. 
Marquise Gilbert, excuse me. It was against Marquise Gilbert. So take that for what it's worth there. And that one was in the middle of the field, which is where we expect Javaris Johnson to, to, to eat this season. Um, TJ then went up and Zevion Capers absolutely whooped DJ James. Ton of separation. Wasn't anywhere near him. So props to um, props to that. And it's worth noting all of these defensive backs were lining up like seven to 10 yards off the line of scrimmage. It wasn't a press type situation. Then Coy Moore absolutely toasted Caden Bridges. And then JD Rim won the rep against, I believe it was Naismith, the, the walk-on wide receiver. So all three of those were uh, from TJ. There was a rep with a contested ball with Donovan Kaufman in the middle of the field, probably 10, 15, 20 yards downfield between Donovan Kaufman and Tarvarish Dawson and Donovan Kaufman. There was some physicality there. There was a kind of a mix up there and, and he forced the incompletion, which was exciting. The, the biggest downside of this one-on-one -on -one drill was TJ Finley. He missed an easy slant to Javarius Johnson. Javarius Johnson had the separation. It was quick. TJ just threw it out in front of him by like two yards or so um, based on my vantage point there. And then the last two reps that we saw from this was Zach Calzada throwing a pass to Malcolm Johnson Jr. It was beautiful. And then the best throw of the day was the last rep that we saw. Um, Zach Calzada to Coy Moore on an inside seam. Um, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. And I wish I remembered who it was on, but it was all about... Um, this this drill drastically benefits the offense. So the fact that, you know, J.D. Rim and Jalen Simpson um, won reps and Donovan Coppin won reps, props to them for, for fighting through that. But, you know, everybody's asking about what did Zach Calzada look like and what did T.J. Finley look like, and they both looked fine. I think Calzada did look better. Um, Calzada's footwork doesn't look right to me. It looks clunky, but I think his arm is better. And then Finley's the other way around. I think Finley's footwork actually looked better to me today. Once again, 26 minutes in the first practice of fall camp. Um, Finley looked smoother to me, but he had these occasional balls that were just like, that's not, that's not going to cut it. What are we doing over here? So um, that was kind of the biggest takeaway for me. But Calzada had a few balls that were just placed right where you want them to be. Outbreaking route stuff like Malcolm Johnson Jr. that I mentioned, and then just laid it in the basket of Coy Moore on that in-breaking route at the end seam at the end of the, um, at the end of it. And the stuff against air, um, I think TJ did well, but when there was defenders there, it seemed like I would give Calzada a little bit of the edge for that. But still, his, his footwork just didn't look right to me. So they'll clean it up. They'll clean it up. Not worried about it because... It looked fine in all of those videos that we saw that, you know, that Calzada's uh, quarterback trainer was posting. It looked a lot more smooth in those scenarios. So I don't think it's a concern, but still his arm talent is there, guys. I really think his arm talent is there. But big picture, the wide receivers, I, I followed them around, the wide receivers and the tight ends. It's to me, that's the biggest storyline. We all know that the defense is good. But it just seems like a totally different group from spring, they look bigger, they look more athletic, and I didn't see one dropped pass the entire day, and I followed them, and that was even something that we saw last year, and it's like, oh, it's just warm-ups, oh, it's just warm-ups, and it's like, yeah, you, but you probably shouldn't drop those. You know, when Ike Killiard's throwing you passes that are like five-yard outs and things like that, you should never drop those. Didn't really see, excuse me, didn't really see many double catches or anything like that either, so a lot to like out of the wide receiver position. In just a moment, I want to talk about the offensive line in a little bit more detail um, and what I think that could potentially mean, what to look for moving forward, and all of that right here on Locked On Auburn. I want to encourage you to join the Locked On Auburn Discord. A lot of discussion about practice today and what exactly that means moving forward um, as this, these Tigers get ready for, for the season. But yeah, it's free. All you have to do is click the link. It is in the episode description down below on YouTube. Or if you are watching or listening on podcasts, rather, um, it's in the episode description. It's all free. Just click on it. Join us. It'll be, uh, it'll be a good time. Um, the offensive line. So Brandon Council was not with the starters 
surprising me a little bit, but we've heard nothing but great things about Cam Stutz. Nothing but great things about Cam Stutz. But the rest of it was kind of chalk to me. I am curious, like tomorrow, Saturday, we will see a version of this again. I assume we'll get a 20-minute period tomorrow on Saturday. And I wonder if we see a different offensive line. Because I want to see what it looks like with Brandon Council at right tackle. To me, that I think is the most interesting change that could potentially happen. Let's assume Cam Stutz is a starting guard on this team. What happens after that? But like we talked about on this morning's Locked on Auburn, you need three guards. So if Brandon Council or Cam Stutz or somehow Keandre Jones doesn't start, all three of them will probably play at times this season. So you need something there. And Troxel, you know, he talked to media after practice and he talked about how his knees felt the best that they've like ever felt, which is encouraging, but also like, what else is he going to say? I, I don't, I don't know. Um, but still, I, I think you can definitely look at that with a glass half full type of attitude, but Tate Johnson being the backup center, I thought was a little surprising as well, but you know, J- Jaleel Irvin was the center for the Birmingham Bowl when Nick Brahms was limited slash out due to that surgery that he had after the season last year. And then Alec Jackson, I think, is a decent third slash fourth guard as well. And so, to me, you've got the dudes in the interior. It's the tackles. And so, th- that to me makes it makes me question, like, okay, if Brandon Council can play anywhere on the offensive line, which he's done throughout his career, even before he got to Auburn, more so before he got to Auburn. You have guards. You need tackles. Just because, like, look, I'm pulling for Austin Troxel. And I'm pulling for Killian Zaire. But after that, and when you got, like, Brendan Coffey, and then after that, like, it's kind of a big drop-off when you look at offensive tackle. Like, you know, what happens after that? And so if you're able to, from just a number standpoint, put Brandon Council out there to all of a sudden create depth, I don't know what the downside to that is. This is from a backup standpoint, like Brandon Council, if he's not going to start for you, and once again, we're overreacting totally to these, these 20 minutes of practice. That we, this is one drill that I'm referring to. Um, but whoever it is, if it's Brandon Council, if it's Cam Stutz, whatever it may be, offer depth at the tackle position as well. And, and, and they're probably doing that. They're probably doing that. It's just, that's what we were able to see. So to me, big picture takeaways, the wide receivers look better. <clears throat> um, I don't know if it's a legitimate quarterback competition, but Zach Calzada looked good. TJ Finley looked fine. And to me, the tight end room is still the deepest room on this team. So watched a lot of like one-on-ones where, you know, the tight end would get the ball and they could do whatever they wanted. And the linebacker could pretty much had to close down, break him down type thing. And the first step for the linebackers look good. The tight ends, more athletic than they look. They're all big, bulky guys, but they were able to move in space pretty well. Eugene Asante, I thought, looked really good. Owen Papo obviously looked really good. Cam Riley's massive. Um, he's not as smooth of a mover in space, I think, than, than these other guys. And you know, Wesley Steiner is a stocky dude. Like, that is just, that dude is a bowling ball. Um, he was definitely a fullback in another life. You got to think, but he, um, he moved really well and we've heard nothing about how athletic he is. So Auburn's linebackers are really, really big. Auburn's tight ends are really, really big. That was a fun battle to watch consistently. And they were kind of talking smack back and forth. There was some intensity there, um, driven by the coaching staff. So a lot to like, a lot to like high energy. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was a good day. So we will do a similar show like this tomorrow. After Auburn practices, I think the viewing window is at 1045 Central Time. So probably about an hour after that, I'll try to get a show up. And if y'all would prefer that be a live show, let me know. Let me know. We could definitely do something like that. So folks, you can uh, you can read all of our written work and coverage of this at AuburnDaily.com. That is Sports Illustrated's Auburn site. I think we do a good job there. I wrote about some of my observations with that. And follow me on Twitter at Z Blackerby. I'm going to slowly be tweeting out video from practice that we're allowed to uh, to video and, and put up. Uh, comb through them and make sure we're not breaking any rules there. So, uh, yeah, check that out at Z Blackerby. And go ahead and click subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're watching on YouTube, please like the video. If you're listening on iTunes, please rate the show. It means a ton. And we'll be back tomorrow right here on Locked on Auburn.